Hi, my name is Danny Crocco. I'm the chef and owner of Millhouse Brewing Company. The concept of Millhouse Brewing Company actually started a long time ago. Um, it's probably about two years before uh, Millhouse opened. Myself and my partner Eric Baxter actually were having a couple drinks at a bar one night and talking about what we want to do to make the Hudson Valley better in terms of food and also beer. Our other partners, Larry Stock and Jamie Bishop, who are the brewmasters and they were home brewers at the time, really wanted to make a big step. And it was a pretty easy thing to do. Master Larry and myself, we met in fifth grade. Um, knew each other, uh, growing up our whole lives, and uh, started brewing in my basement. And uh, some investors came to us and said, hey, we're thinking about opening up this brew pub in Poughkeepsie. This was uh, in 2012. And we said yes. Um, so we started building that brew pub. And from there, um, in about two years, we expanded to this place. Um, the brew pub is a seven barrel brew house, 330 seat restaurant, culinary inspired, with 14 separate beers on tap on any given day. Um, we take on a lot here at Millhouse. So from there, we bootstrapped to our production facility um, because we've had a lot of support. The local community has embraced us. We've created over 50 local jobs here. Um, so we're a big employer in the area as well. And this facility actually lets us get our beer out to other plates in the States, um, in New York, and hopefully outside the country. Hey, how you doing? I'm Brewmaster Jamie, and welcome to Millhouse Brewing Company. So, what you can see um, over here to my left is the brew stand. And uh, this is where we make hot work. So what we do is, if you can see over here, that grain from the mill comes through a chute and drops down and mixes with some water. What we do from there is let it sit for about an hour. And uh, what Fernando is doing right now is called laudering. So we're separating those grains from the liquid, um, which goes over to a boil kettle, which is where we'll add our hops and other ingredients to make the flavor profile of the beer. Um, that process takes about two hours, so we'll skip forward to uh, what happens next in that process, which is over here. After we boil it, we've got to cool it down, and this is our heat exchanger here. So we'll take this heat exchanger and we'll run 212 degree boiling wort through this and cold water through the other side. What that'll do is cool that boiling wort down to a yeast friendly temperature for what we call pitching. Um, yeast is really what makes beer. Um, brewers, we kind of make sugar water. Um, the yeast eats that sugar water, it burps CO2, and it excretes alcohol. Um, and that all happens on the other side of the brewery, where we like to call this hot side. This over here would be our cold side. So once the beer is cooled down, we'll put it into what's called a fermenter, um, which are these conical shaped looking tanks right here. Um, what happens is the yeast will sit in there for about two weeks and it will turn that wort into our finished product beer. Uh, we have some temperature controls that you can see, the electronics that keep that beer within a one degree temperature for fermentation, so it really controls the flavor profile. Uh, once we're done fermenting that beer, it actually goes into one of these, which is called a bright beer tank. And if you look behind us, you'll see that Millhouse has a nice lab. This lab here is what really gives us quality control and a scientific approach to our beer. So we have a flat screen where we use what's called the hemocytometer with a microscope. We'll do some cell counting and some real geeky science stuff. We'll check pHs, uh, gravity is very daily. You can see all the instrumentation here, but this is what ensures that our beer is the same way every time and has quality control. This is our new canning line. We purchased this from Wild Goose in Denver, Colorado, so it's a nice American-made canning line, friendly support available all the time. It uh, consists of a depalletizer, so we take these large pallets of cans in, and the depalletizer basically, in a nice orderly fashion, sends them off onto this conveyor belt. They come down through this twist rinse device where the can gets rinsed out on the inside, comes down onto the canning line, gets purged with CO2, filled with beer, comes down, it gets lid, a lid gets seamed onto it, comes off, we set up these tables called pack out tables, which point we just pack up pallets, 80, 90 cases. 
and then from there goes out to the restaurants, bars, and that whole type of retail chain environment. Being that uh, this is Millhouse Brewing Company, we we really believe in beer and pairing food with beer. Kind of the biggest thing that I can say about my menu when I create menus, when I create dishes, is that there's only one parameter, there's only one thing that basically puts us in a box and it's the food has to be good with beer. A lot of classic French, they use, a, they use wine when they cook with food. We've kind of adapted that and when we make sauces and stocks, we actually use a lot of uh, beer. Uh, for example, all of our steaks, um, chicken, anything that has like a reduction of veal stock or um, sort of some sort of stock, instead of having red wine, usually has either our stout or our kilt spinner, which is a Scottish strong ale. And it's a way for us to bridge kind of the amazing products that are coming out of the brew kettles with the stuff that's coming out of the kitchen. And that's kind of a, a big thing. We've, you know, we've played with using spent grain in our pizza dough, but we actually make soups with, uh, we have a beer and cheese soup. We have a ramen dish here at uh, the restaurant and we actually use an IPA in the broth um, and it brings out a lot of the citrus notes that go along with what we're you know, cooking. I'd say around 80% of our produce that we buy comes from the Hudson Valley during the peak seasons. We definitely do our part with trying to keep it as you know, small and close to our address as possible, just because I'm a small business and I like to support other small businesses. Honestly, it's why a lot of people love working here is because it's kind of that hometown has a really good community feel to it, this place.